The Devils dropped their second straight tonight, a 4-3 loss in overtime against the New York Rangers. Welcome into your post-game live show presented by Genucel. I'm Catherine Bogart. Plenty of action in this one. Let's take a look at the highlights as this is the second meeting in two weeks between these teams, both at Madison Square Garden. The Devils have been working on first period starts and they have a great one in this one. Nico Heischer scores 1-0 Devils in the opening three minutes. Heischer, the puck hits off of him from Jonas Siegenthaler's initial shot. Two minutes later, Dawson Mercer scores and gives the Devils a 2-0 lead. Mercer's eighth of the season and two Devils goals in the opening five minutes, which shows New Jersey is bringing the, the extra attitude to that first period they need. Final two minutes of the first, Chris Kreider scores. Devils lead cut to 2-1. Heading into the second period, five minutes in, Mercer is inches away from his second of the night. He hits the post. But minutes later, Jack Hughes scores. 3-1 New Jersey Devils. Mercer sets up Hughes with a long pass as he did against the Rangers last game. And Hughes walks it in and scores going high. Minutes later, Jack Hughes is tripped on a breakaway, and it is a penalty shot for Hughes. And since the Devils haven't had a shootout this season, that's not something they've practiced a lot. Hughes goes in, but a very smart play by Shesterkin, a little poke check, gets it, no goal. Devils still have a 3-1 lead. Six minutes left in the second, Vincent Trocek scores on the power play to cut New Jersey's lead to 3-2. And seven seconds later, Capo Caco scores, a tied game at three due to missed coverage on the right side. No goals in the third period, so the game goes to overtime. Two minutes and 15 seconds in, Philip Heedle scores to give the Rangers a 4-3 victory. Vitek Vanacek stopping 19 of the 23 shots he faced in tonight's game. For the fourth straight game, the Devils have been held to 29 shots or less, which is uncharacteristic of a team that was second highest shots in the NHL, averaging about 36 a night. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we have expect to hear from players and Devils head coach live from New York City, and we'll break down more with Chico Resch and Chris Westcott. I know that. You know that. Nobody else knows that. Huh? Nobody puts baby in the corner. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Wax on right hand, wax off, left hand, wax on, wax off. Hey you guys, I thought this was a party, let's dance! Jack Hughes with speed, Jesper Bratt filling the opposite lane, comes to Bratt, he scores! Wow. Welcome back. The Devils drop a 4-3 overtime decision in New York City against the Rangers. Something the Devils worked on coming into this game was first period starts. New Jersey was lacking with energy, keeping it simple, and really generating good offensive chances in the opening frame, which allowed their opponents to often take an early lead. In fact, the last time these teams played, the Rangers scored two goals in the opening four minutes. Tonight, it was the reverse story. The Devils had two goals in the first five minutes of this game, one by Nico Heischer and another by Dawson Mercer, just showing how New Jersey is constantly working on those little details to make things better in this one. The first goal was key. Off of a faceoff win by Heischer, Jonas Siegenthaler show, throws a shot on goal and it hits off of Heischer and goes past Shesterkin, just showing the importance of the Devils controlling the puck, especially off the faceoff. Dawson Mercer now has two goals in as many games. And the line of Mercer, Hughes, and Halla is continuing to show up for this Devils team. It's one of the strongest line combinations the Devils have had. Over the last seven games, they've had 26 points. Hughes has led the way, and he's not only the Devils' leading goal scorer, he's also driving that second line. But Halla and Mercer know their roles in supporting Hughes, and Mercer is finally finding that scoring touch he had in his rookie season. We're still expecting to hear from Devils players live in New York City, but let's take a look at the highlights while we wait for some of them to arrive to the post-game show. The Devils taking on the Rangers for the second time at MSG in just two weeks. Three minutes in, a shot from Jonas Siegenthaler is deflected off of Nico Heischer, and it's a 1-0 Devils goal. 1-0 Devils lead. This is a really key win on the faceoff that helps the Devils go up early. Two minutes later, Dawson Mercer scores 2-0. Hughes 
first assisted on that play, but then it was actually taken away for the assist credit. It did hop, hit off of a Rangers player on the way in. Final two minutes of the first period, Chris Kreider scores to cut the Devils' lead to 2-1. Five minutes into the second period, Mercer is trying to get his fifth second period goal of the season as inches away hitting the post. But Jack Hughes will score just minutes later to make it 3-1 Devils. Hughes showing why he has eight goals in his last six games. When you look at Hughes's control there, he goes top shelf, even though he has two defenders against him. Minutes later, Hughes is taken out on his way in, trying to shoot again, and he gets a penalty shot, something that the Devils have not practiced since they haven't had a shootout this season yet. He is denied by Igor Shosturkin, who is trying to come back from letting up three goals in the first half of this game. Six minutes left in the second. Vincent Trocek scores on the power play. The Devils now lead 3-2. And seven seconds later, Capo Caco scores to tie this game at three. There was missed coverage there on the right side. There was no goals in the third period, so this game heads to overtime. And two minutes and 15 seconds into the extra period, Philip Heidel scores to win this game for the Rangers. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we expect to hear from players live in New York City. And later on, Chris and Chico will join me from New York to give their thoughts on tonight's loss. Promise them hockey, and hockey they will have. The Devils make the playoffs for the first time in their history. The championship to New Jersey. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. And Marty Brodeur is the winningest goaltender in the NHL. I know you've been a long time Devils fan way back. Do you have a favorite moment? Absolutely. Is when you guys raised the first cup, man. There's a sense of pride that goes along with being a fan. For some reason, you feel like you've won as well. And I remember that was a huge moment. Like, Clerks had just happened in 94. Mm -hmm. 95 was the year of Mallrats. Watching you guys win a cup that year made up for the <laughs> fact that Mallrats tanked. I was Everyone like, well, Mallrats tanked, but Jersey wins. It gives me goosebumps you just mentioned in 95 and going for the cup. We wanted to make New Jersey proud. We knew we had that type of team. All we heard, the press, the papers, we got no shot against the Detroit Red Wings. Jacques Lemaire puts both lineups on the board side by side and he's got this French accent and he goes, Dano, can you all play that guy? Richie, can you play this guy? I mean, he's going guys that are comparables. We started to look at it and go, man, we might be right. We might even be better. Like we thought we were deeper. So we were quietly confident going in the series. Um, we ended up sweeping the Detroit Red Wings. The rest is history. But we were just focused and a team. I love that how you, <laughs> you roll over the most important part. We beat the Detroit Red Wings. The rest is history. <laughs> As a guy uh, from the great state of New Jersey, thank you for coming to the home state, making it yours, bringing your talent, and putting us on the map, man. We've got to lift the cup. I go way back with you. I remember, which I thought was special, because I know you're a big fan, and I did want to ask you how you became a hockey fan mm. in general of the Devils, but you were at the Hall of Fame ceremony. Was it Broder or was it Niedermeyer or which? Both, yes. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, like, to me, I, that's special. This you're is, going because you, I love it. those guys and, and that team. They're <laughs> close to my heart. So I've been able to include them in my flicks over the years. The first time uh, when we made Clerks, 
Randall's wearing a devil's cap throughout the entire movie. I remember. I, I um, love it. <laughs> and it takes it all the way up to just recently with Clerks 3. The first time Jay and Silent Bob enter the movie, Jay walks out in the jersey with a Brodeur jersey on the back and stuff. Um, I've always loved them, so we've tried to slip them in a bunch of places in movies. From watching you <laughs> from behind the glass to standing on the ice and talking to you is an uh, achievement for me. Kev, great seeing you. It's been too long. It has been. Uh, and I love that you saw all those glory years. Yes, I was there, man. <laughs> Let's go Devils. Welcome back. Defenseman Damon Severson, who played just shy of 22 minutes and had plenty of chances offensively, particularly in the extra period, is live at MSG just moments ago. Oh, and uh, in your thoughts, how it changed in the second period? Yeah, well, we were here a couple weeks ago and it was kind of the opposite, right? They got off to a hot start and we came back and similar tonight. So um, we got away from our game a little bit. Uh, that's what kind of hurt us. We gave them a couple chances and they scored on them. But, um, you know, overall, pretty even game. Um, goalies made some saves. Uh, just the tough one there in the second. We gave up goals so quick back to back like that. Could you sense the momentum mm -hmm. change on the penalty shot? When, you know, they get the save there. Could you sense them a little bit of momentum change? Uh, you, you could say that um, in a sense. Um, that that's a key moment in the game. That if we get a goal, we're we're up by a bunch, and and they get a save there. They feel like they're still in the game. So um, you know they got a good goalie over there. He made a good save on Jack on that on that penalty shot, and it could have went. Uh, you know that's a 50-50 chance go either way. Uh, and unfortunately, it didn't go our way, but um, we had we still had a chance, plenty of chance to win the game. We just couldn't get it done tonight. You get a point, but I'm sure there's there's some disappointment you guys expect. Absolutely, yeah. We expect you know we want to win every game, so. Uh, we knew coming in they were going to be ready to go. Um, they, they didn't have their best first period, but they came and brought it uh, in, the, in the following two. So, um, you know, it's 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 a game that we'll look back on. And, you know, we got it. We did get a point. We battled for that. But it would be nice to get two. And now we have to, you know, go back home tomorrow and take care of business. And finally, on Heedle's goal in overtime, it's just, were you surprised by the shot there? No, not. I just was going to him. He made a good shot. Um, similar, I had a good chance not long, you know, before that, and uh, goalie made a good save. Similar shot, blocker side, and um, just posting in, perfect shot. Uh, I wasn't surprised at all. I was, I was on him. He just quick snapped it quick, and I wasn't sure it was, uh, you know, Panarin coming. I didn't want to give him a, you know, breakaway. He made a good play. Obviously, skilled player, and um, just made a good shot. And uh, what do you do? One of the things that you guys had been working on leading up to this game was really, you know, going back to working a little bit more as a five-man unit and being a little quicker on pucks. Did you feel that from the team tonight? Yeah, for for the most part, um, there was some times where we were a little slow and a little bit laggy, but. Um, for the most part, I think that's that's our biggest thing, and that's a strength of ours if we are doing those things. And um, you can tell the way we can skate. We got the skill, we got the speed. When we're on top of pucks, when we're turning pucks over, going back at their team, right back in, in their face. Um, you know, that's when we're creating our chances. And you saw that when we did create chances tonight. But uh, when they were getting chances, it was it was when we were doing the opposite. One of the things that we've also talked about is you know not wanting to lose two in a row. Obviously, you pick up a point at least here tonight. But where do you know? So where does your mentality shift like going into tomorrow? Yeah, new day, new game, new team. We'll we'll you know go over stuff against the the team we're playing tomorrow, and um, you know be, be prepared to play. And it's a back to back situation. There's there's no travel involved, fortunately for us, because we're we're so close. So there'll be no excuses. We'll be able to sleep in our own beds tonight, get home at a at a good hour, and we'll be able to regroup and and get back at it right tomorrow. What's maybe not working on that power play unit? Uh, well, which one? Both of them, or yeah, both uh, on yours in particular. Uh, second well, we had we did have some good chances there. Um, we're not getting much time, to be honest. It's hard it's when you when good. you're when you're not getting much time. Um, you can't really get into a groove. That first unit sees a lot of time. So, um, you know, when we're getting two D every once in a while, we're getting one D every once in a while. We're kind of just a little bit mixed up, and you, you can practice it and work on it all you want in practice. But uh, when you get into a game situation, things are kind of uh, throwing in a little bit of a, a loop for you, so um, we're not getting much time. That's that's a you know a key thing, but we did get some good looks there in the latter half of our one power play in the second. So um, we just like to you know be able to get one for the group when we when we're we're able to and we're able to get our chance. We're still waiting to hear from Captain Nico Heischer, who had the opening goal in tonight's game, and Devils head coach Lindy Ruff. But since Chris Wesco and Chico Rush couldn't join me here in studio, we had them phone it in from MSG. Here's a recap of the game from their point of view. Well, Chico, 4-3, the uh, overtime win for the Rangers here. The pivotal moment, in my opinion, was the penalty shot by Jack Hughes. What could have been right there? I mean, unfortunately for the Devils, they don't get the goal there, and I think that would have been an absolute backbreaker. But instead, they get that desperation poke save from Sturgeon. No, you're right. And just before that... Uh, 
uh, Dawson Mercer had hit the crossbar. So we're talking about two teams really competing well. First period, Rangers were flat, and the Devils took advantage of that. They went up 2-1. But after that, it was back and forth, pretty close. But Jack Hughes makes a gorgeous deke, faking like he's going to go to his right, and he quickly cuts back, and Shesterkin loses his balance, is falling back, and all he could do is take a stick and chop at the stick of Jack Hughes, and he just got the end of the stick on the puck, and Jack lost it. But I, I agree with you. If Jack scores there, this game's probably over. Yeah, it's just the way the Rangers' season has gone, the way we saw them the last time here on November 28th. I know now they've won four straight games, but it just seems like when Shesterkin's not on his A game, that would have just been it for the Devils. And, and, and you know what? Hey, give credit to the Rangers because down 2 nothing, they hung in there, and once they found their legs, they came at the Devils. Well, and I think the Devils are going to find out. they got a tough schedule coming up here. I mean, the Rangers are no slouch. Boston's no slice. We found out the Islanders aren't. Caps are starting to win. Pittsburgh's on a wonderful roll of wins. Uh, who am I missing? Carolina. Yeah. I mean, these games are going to be decided by a goal here and there by one big play or the other. And yeah. you talked about the big play that could have turned it for Devils if Jack had scored on that, on that penalty shot. So we're going to break it down, but it's not like one team had this huge edge over the other. Could have went either way. Yeah, absolutely. Boston, towards the end of the month, I'm really eager to see how the Devils match up against them. But you know what? Now the Devils have a back-to-back -back as well coming up, so maybe they have the tired legs tomorrow, but they can't use that as an excuse, Chico, because now you don't want to lose three games <laughs> in a row. But at least they got the point here. That's a little bit of cushion, right? Huge, yeah. huge. In a race that's going to go down with all these teams battling and winning at different times, having you know rushes and then they might fall behind, it's going to go back and forth. But you're right, tomorrow night, and I don't want to get ahead of it, but they're playing Dallas. Pretty good team, right? Yeah. And again, we're talking about measuring sticks. Tonight was a measuring stick. And I cannot say that the Devils failed the test. I can't say that. Yeah, they didn't score the goal uh, that they could have. If, if Severson scores down the slot, you know, pretty much all alone, and he makes the shot like Heedle did moments later to win it, we're celebrating a victory for the yeah. Devils. That's how close it was. So, But tomorrow night, we're not getting ahead of ourselves because tonight was entertaining and it was. I, th I think the fans loved it. Um, but tomorrow night again, it's what, what can you do tomorrow night with a little more tired legs? And we'll see that then. But now, Chris, I thought Vanacek played well. Yep. You know, the, yep. uh, the impact line really did as well. Um, I'm trying to think who else I really like. The liked. impact line for me was the one that really stood out tonight. Just defensively, offensively, their possession in the offensive zone. They just seemed really on top of their game tonight. And I don't, I don't know if I won't say that Lindy Ruff can't trust the Boakfist line, but they didn't get to trot out there because, you know what, he just wanted to double shift and give more time oh. uh, for that impact line. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I really like horses, my daughter and I. And if you see wild horses, there's always one or two that's yeah. leading the pack. <laughs> And I think the coaching staff realized tonight that impact line, uh, McLeod, uh, Zetterland, and Wood were the team. They've got three guys leading, and they played a lot, especially in the third period. That was good news. I thought Jack. Jack ended up with six shots on goal, but Jack was hanging on to that puck, falling into this situation where he's trying to beat people maybe, and it's, it's not happening for him. And I think the thing that didn't work well for the uh, Devils tonight was their power play. Yeah. It just didn't seem to create the offense or the chances they were hoping. Yeah, and on the other end, power play goals going the way of the Rangers in this one. And that, unfortunately for the Devils, was the difference in this one. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more of our post-game show, and we'll go back to the studio to Catherine if you're watching on the simulcast. You know. Thanks, Chris and Chico. Always great to hear both of your opinions on this game as the Devils drop an overtime decision 4-3 against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Welcome back to your post-game show presented by GenuCell. The Devils need to focus on a couple different areas, one of which is the second period. Heading into this game, the Devils led the NHL with most second period goals. But a trend that's come out of the last two games is New Jersey letting in five goals against over that middle frame. It's something the Devils will zone in on as they first worked on fixing their first period starts, being quicker, playing simpler, and scoring in the opening 20 minutes. We have Devils captain Nico Heischer live moments ago at MSG. 
Well, you get the point, but I, I gather there's a little, um, I want to say disappointment. Um, you guys expected more. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, was a hard battle out there. Uh, left some chances out, and and uh, but again, I think uh, we lack with our details, and that cost us a couple goals too many. And uh, from now on, I mean, uh, no time for panic. We we got to regroup, and tomorrow is a new game, and uh, that's what we got to focus on right now. You came out flying. Um, what changed, in your opinion, in the second period? Um, I mean, obviously, the uh, the other team's going to have pushes as well during the game. And uh, I think uh, penalties kind of slowed us down uh, in the second. And uh, I think we've got to be more disciplined, especially against a team we know uh, they have a really deadly pe uh, power play. And, uh, I mean, they scored a goal on it as well. So uh, we've got to clean that up. You get a point, but do you get the sense of the uh, the intensity of these games, uh, you know, in, in the division? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's a rival game. It was uh, really, I guess, it was a fun, fun game to watch. Uh, was was intense and uh, uh, close till the end. And uh, they got one one goal more. And uh, like I said, uh, no time for panic right now. We just uh, regroup. Uh, look what went wrong tonight, and uh, got to do it better tomorrow. Did you just feel like there was a bit of a disconnect on your power play opportunities. Uh, yeah, power play wasn't wasn't good enough tonight for sure. Do you? Do you look at uh, you know, your chances on uh, Igor and just say, hey, he, you know, he, he made some, some really good saves? I mean, is that how you look at it? I mean, yeah, he's obviously a good goalie. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, we just got to get more in front of his eyes. Uh, to, if he can see it, he can save it. And uh, that's where we're lacking a little bit to get, in, get inside more and uh, score a little bit more uh, dirty goals. Devils captain Nico Heischer following his team's 4-3 overtime loss at MSG against the New York Rangers. Let's take a look at the highlights for this one if you're just joining us on the post-game show as the Devils and Rangers are playing each other for the second time in two weeks at MSG. Three minutes in, Nico Heischer deflects in a shot from Jonas Siegenthaler to make it 1-0 Devils early in the game. And Heischer's 13th goal of the season helps the Devils get off to a quick first period start. Two minutes later, Jack Hughes and Dawson Mercer find magic again. Mercer's eighth goal of the season gives the Devils a 2-0 lead. And Hughes and Mercer continue to connect on goals as a line. Final two minutes of the first period, Chris Kreider scores, giving the Devils lead down to 2-1. Five minutes into the second, Dawson Mercer and Jack Hughes back on attack again, and Mercer hits the post inches away from scoring. Minutes later, Jack Hughes scores to make it 3-1 Devils, and Mercer sets up Hughes on a long pass as he did last game against the Rangers. Hughes skates it in and goes high to score. Six minutes left, moments later, Jack Hughes is on a breakaway. He is tripped and gets a penalty shot, which is something that the Devils haven't been used to since they haven't had a shootout this season. Shosturkin has a great check, poke check there to keep Hughes from scoring his second of the game. Final six minutes of the second period, Vincent Trocek scores on the power play. The Devils now have a 3-2 lead. Seven seconds later, the Rangers score once again. Capo Caco ties the game at three. He's all alone on that right side. No goals in the third period, so the game goes to overtime. And two minutes and 15 seconds into the extra frame, Philip Hedl scores. Rangers win 4-3. We're still expecting to hear from Devils head coach Lindy Ruff, but we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, we'll have even more analysis of this game. Hamilton pulls the trigger. Rebounds there. He sure puts it in. that you know that nobody else knows that huh nobody puts baby in the corner roads where we're going we don't need roads wax on right hand wax off left hand wax on wax off hey you guys I thought this was a party let's dance Promise them hockey, and hockey they will have. The Devils make the playoffs for the first time in their history. The championship to New Jersey. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. And Marty Brendor is the winning 
greatest goaltender in the NHL. It's over! In overtime, Jack Hughes wins it! Hockey back, fans have a brand new drink of choice this season thanks to Tom's River Brewing. Introducing Stick Toss. We brought former Devil Jim Dowd and our Be a Brewmaster contest winners here to the brewing company in order to learn everything about the beer and get an exclusive first taste of Stick Toss. We walked through the brewery, gave us a step by step, very in depth. Things I didn't know, it's very interesting. Going to the games, we'll be looking at the beer saying, hey, we were there, we saw how it was made. We got an early tasting and it was excellent. It wasn't too heavy, it wasn't too light, it was sort of right in the middle, which was great. And like I said, it's one of those, you know, when it goes down, it goes down nice and smooth. And again, so it'll be, it'll be great pre, post, and during the games. We got an opportunity today to serve right off of uh, the tank. And that tank is where it's going to get packaged off of. So they got the opportunity to have beer about as fresh as you can possibly get it. Before it goes into the can, before it goes into the keg, that's it. That, that's a, the live product is right there. It's really great having you know, our sweepstakes winner and having fans that she brought with her to be here to be really hands-on in the process. It's something that not everybody really gets to do. Everyone can always come to the tap room or pick up a four pack or go to their favorite bar and, and you know, eventually be getting the stick toss or whatever beer it is. But to actually be there to be part of the process, adding hops, um, they helped us you know, grain out after the end of the brew, watching the transfer of the beer. Um, it's just, it's more exciting for not just them, but for me as well and the rest of our team. It's huge, especially being a kid from down at the shore here, you know, being from Brick, New Jersey, Point Pleasant Beach now, but it's great to have the Devils down in this area, you know, um, and it's just, it's just good for the community. And if you get their footprint this far down south, it's a great thing. So when we actually, you know, get an opportunity to go to the game, you know, it's going to be really exciting to be there, have, you know, stick toss in hand, enjoying it with our friends and our fans. That's a really exciting opportunity. It's a unique opportunity. Again, like I said, to be a small craft brewery in New Jersey, drinking our beer with the Devils, it doesn't really get much more than that. Stick Toss is available at Prudential Center and other local retailers starting on October 15th. And the next time you're at The Rock, grab a can while you cheer on your team with this Devils-themed beer. Cheers. Jack Hughes with speed. Jesper Bratt filling the opposite lane. Comes to Bratt. He scores! Wow. Welcome back. A bright spot for the Devils over the last eight games has been the second line of Eric Halla, Dawson Mercer, and Jack Hughes. The trio have combined for 26 points over that time because not only are all three forwards executing their roles, they're also connecting on passes stronger than most other teams, which allows them to set each other up for beautiful goals. As a result, that second line has become someone that the Devils have turned to, and two of the goals tonight, both in the opening frame, were from that second line. We have Devils head coach live from the MSG locker room just moments ago. Here's Lindy Ruff. 
Well, Linda, you, you get the point. You came out flying, um, but I, I, I get a sense something changed there in the second period. Did you, did you lose maybe a little momentum on the penalty show? Uh, well, you know, I think we had uh, an opportunity to probably put a, a nail in the coffin with the penalty shot, but didn't. Uh, Might have gave them a little bit of momentum. Uh, but, you know, we did, didn't do a great job of killing the penalty off, and then uh, we had a huge mistake on the next face-off that cost us. I get the sense, though, you know, you're up on a team 3-1. You just got to find a way to, to close it out, right? Well, I mean, we had, we had our share of odd number of rushes that we didn't uh, put away. Uh, give them credit when uh, when we handed them an opportunity, they put it away. Um, we do need to clean up a couple of those big mistakes that uh, cost us dearly. Uh, those are mistakes that we hadn't been uh, making. I thought the uh, third period, um, you know, we settled down, uh, played a good period, had some good opportunities, didn't give up much. Um, but the second period was really when you have a three-one lead. If you can take care of the puck a little bit better and and don't make the mistake that uh, we made, uh, out of the game. What's the lesson here for your team with these divisional games, as you see, uh, as intense as they are? Well, you take it one game at a time. Um, you know, I, I said earlier in the year, you got to be uh, comfortable being uncomfortable. There's parts of that game that were real uncomfortable when the uh, the pressure was on. Uh, you got to come out of that a better player. How difficult can it make it when, you know, clearly by the way you're playing right now, you can't necessarily rely on that fourth line? And what does that do with the trickle, up, trickle down effect? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, the trickle down is uh, the, the minutes they play. And we're going to back to back game tomorrow. Um, it really has no effect, I don't think, on, on tonight's game. Mm -hmm. I think if you ask the player to man, they, they love playing three lines. Uh, but, uh, you know, it may, may take a toll for tomorrow. Is it something that has to, ch is there something in particular that has to change on that one? I don't get scored against. Um, you know, we went through that uh, exactly, that four check and we didn't get, uh, one of our forwards didn't get above. Uh, our defense kind of half gambled, but didn't really gamble. And it was probably the only play we, we gave up an opportunity in the first period. But, you know, it's a... Uh, we didn't play the uh, two and one very well after that either. How good was Jack tonight, uh, in your opinion, just the way he was skating out there? Uh, you know, you know, again, he uh, he was a difference maker uh, in a lot of a lot of situations. So, um, you know, night in, night out, you're. I mean, you look at their best players making some of the plays tonight, and our best players making our plays. Uh, you know, Jack is right up with, uh, right up there as you know one of the top players in the game. On the uh, penalty shot, you just you you got to give uh, take your hat off to Igor making the save there on, on on Jack who's beating them pretty good lately. Yeah, I, you know the uh, you know penalty shot is you know you either score or you don't. It's like the shootout. You you know you execute the move or your shot, and um, it's just a battle between you know player and goalie. And what is about the power play? It didn't didn't click tonight. Um. I just, you know, I thought we we had some zone time, but didn't again didn't execute some. We hung on to some pucks too long. We had plays to be made. Um, you know, even with the six on five delayed penalty, we had some plays to be made. We hung on to the puck too long, and uh, you know, I think you can maybe take a little lesson out of their power play. How, how quick they moved it around, didn't stay on uh, too many guys stick too long. Uh, so. You know, that again was a part of the game that could have helped us. Overall, do you like your chances uh, in the overtime? I mean, I, I think when you, when you look at, you know, having uh, Jack and Nico and, and Brad, we've got some really good three and three players. Um, so you like it. Um, you know, I don't know what happened with the puck there in the neutral zone with the Tatar, whether it bounced over his stick or, but it looked like we were going to have possession, didn't have possession, and, uh, you know, it ends up going to the back of our net. Personnel-wise, do you like the way your power play is, is made up right now, or, or is there any any changes that you might make there? Well, you know, I think again, if you look at uh, some of the best power plays, and um, they have, you know, they have that flank shooting one time that that is dangerous. Um, the trouble with trying to go to something like that with us is that means that you know a, a Jack or a Bradder has to come off the power play, and you know that's. That's a tough scenario. Indeed, the, uh, in 
reactions to both Howla and Siegenthal? They clearly didn't agree. Did you feel the same way? Um, you know, I, I think the uh, the Hall of call was, uh, was a strange one. You know, if you're going to give that penalty to anybody, maybe you can give it to Severson. But, you know, that was just a, you know, I think it's a call they look probably wouldn't make again either. Thanks. The Devils continue to use this current slate of games as a test heading into the postseason. This is an opportunity for New Jersey to see the areas they need improvement. Two from tonight include missed coverage, particularly down low on the right side, and then the Devils allowing two goals in less than a minute for the second straight game. Working on those areas and continuing to build on strong first periods that the Devils had tonight, keeping it simple, quick, and quick passing to lead to goals, is something that the Devils can build on as they look to be a playoff team and have meaningful games in late April. New Jersey has no time to focus on this loss as they face off against the Dallas Stars tomorrow at home at 7 p.m. The Stars are also on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, losing in Pittsburgh 2-1 tonight off of a Genny Malkin goal that came in the final seconds of the third period. Both teams are fighting for playoff spots and both teams are trying to fix little inconsistencies heading into the next month. As we wrap up this post-game show, remember, full team coverage is on NewJerseyDevils.com. Thanks for joining us on your post-game show presented by Genucel. I'm Catherine Bogart. Have a great night.